and May. Thank Hello. you so much for coming here, joining of course. us. It's a real pleasure. Glad to, to be here. Have you here? Um, let me see if I get it straight. You so you made your first uh, iOS app when you were nine years yes. old. Yes. Uh, you're working or collaborating with uh, IBM, and yes. you've been helping them finding bugs and develop <laughs> their their software. Yes. Uh, you also have a YouTube channel where mm -hmm. you teach uh, machine learning. Yes, Tanma teaches. Okay. And you spoke at several conferences. Uh, you just spoke here at mm -hmm. Crypto and Connect. And you're still uh, not even 15 years old? <laughs> yes, I'm 14. Okay. Uh, are you aware how underachieving <laughs> that makes us feel? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's really just fun for me. You shouldn't feel underachieved. <laughs> you know a lot more than me, but I, I just love doing this. And how do you got hooked into programming? Well, why do you think it's uh, so interesting? Yeah, about, sure. So originally when I began programming, it was at around five years old. Because my, okay. the thing is, my dad used to work as a computer programmer. Uh, and as a curious five-year-old, I had yeah. really nothing much else to do. So I thought, you know, why not uh, take a look at this computer? Because really as a five-year-old, watching the computer display my name on the screen, mm -hmm. add two numbers or do anything else would be like magic. Uh -huh. right? I didn't know how it worked, and I wanted to find out how. I was really curious. So my dad saw that curiosity and introduced me to the world of programming. Uh, and so, you know, uh, the curiosity just kept growing from there mm -hmm. uh, as I would continue to work with technology. And when I was around seven, actually, it was a little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a test coming up in school, but the thing is, I wasn't really good at my times tables. Uh -huh. But I was pretty good at creating a Visual Basic application in Windows. <laughs> so what I did is I created a Visual Basic app to help me practice my times tables by asking me random questions. Uh -huh. And it helped out a lot, actually. Uh, so, you know, I started to use that application. Mm -hmm. um, I got a good throw on the test. Uh, that was in grade three. Mm -hmm. Then in grade four, I thought, hey, why not make this accessible to everyone else so they can uh -huh. use it as well? They can learn their time tables as well. And so I converted it to an iOS application, learned mm -hmm. Objective-C. And then next year, when Swift was released, uh, the day Swift was released at WWDC, I was immediately hooked to it mm -hmm. uh, and started working with Swift technology and started writing my very first book called Hello Swift. Whoa. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> And so basically, your dad was the main enabler. Yeah. Here. He's the one that got you hooked into this. And it looks like you're doing the same for others. You're <laughs> trying to teach others to develop. And, Thank you. And why do you think it's important for kids mm -hmm. or adults or whatever to learn how to code? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Why, is it, why is it important? <laughs> sure. Absolutely. So really the reason that I believe it's important to learn how to code is, I mean, right now, if you take a look at our lives, mm -hmm. everything we do is enabled by technology. Yeah. Every single thing we do, something as simple, uh, you know, sending an email, communicating with people, that's powered mm -hmm. by technology. Uh, everything, even getting our entertainment, it's all powered by technology. Yeah. And so if you take a look at what we do, and now especially since we've got next generation technology mm -hmm. like artificial intelligence, like machine learning, like IoT, like blockchain, like quantum computing, there's so many new kinds of technologies coming up that I really believe that, well, if you don't know how to code or if you don't know how to program, or at least in some kind of field that's related to technology, mm -hmm. then you're kind of stuck stuck in the past. You're stuck uh, behind mm -hmm. in the past. And especially, uh, there's one more quote that I love, and it's actually from a person named Mark Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, what he says is, in the future, there are only going to be two types of jobs. Those in which computers tell humans what to do, and those in which humans tell computers what to do. And Absolutely. so if you want to be on the other yeah. side of that, telling the computers what to do, you need to be the one speaking their language so you mm -hmm. can actually communicate with them, so you can actually code, so you can actually program and develop. Um, however, of course, there are numerous different fields where computers and humans will be collaborating side by side. That's just a fact of how computers are. Just because of bare bones, fundamental mm -hmm. limitations in how computers work, yeah. they're going to be working side by side as in the majority of fields. Uh, and in these kinds of fields, uh, this is where people, you know, that, for example, let's just say you don't have a passion for technology. You shouldn't be coding because there's no point. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, these, these are sorts of the fields where people who aren't very passionate about coding technology will be getting mm -hmm. into. And in order to enable more people to get into these fields, uh, that's really why I have a goal, actually, uh -huh. to reach out to 100,000 aspiring beginners. I'm already uh -huh. around 8,500 people there. Mm -hmm. I've been working towards that since around 2011, once I started my YouTube channel, uh -huh. actually, on Christmas. Christmas of 2011, um, and so I've been working into it towards that ever since through you know keynotes like this one that I yeah. have today at uh, Connect, uh, workshops at schools, universities mm -hmm. across the world, also talks, uh, and essentially trying to take whatever I'm able to learn about technology and share it with as many people as possible so they can use it in their own applications, uh -huh. uh, impact their own lives and the lives of those around them. By the way, uh, I'm not a professional author, 
neither are you. <laughs> but we both know how to write, yes. read and write, because it's a basic fundamental for modern life. Absolutely. Do you think that code is the same thing or will become the same thing? No. no. Code is definitely very, very important. Uh, one thing that I would not say uh, is that coding is something that's absolutely mandatory and something that is as just as important mm -hmm. as reading. It's, it might be a very, very close second, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be as important as reading and writing. Okay. And the reason I say that, first of all, because reading and writing is anyway the fundamental yeah. basis of communication with other humans. And if you can writing code is exactly. writing. <laughs> too. Exactly. But the thing is, if you can write code, but you can't communicate with other humans, that's the problem. So it's a very mm -hmm. close second. But one more thing I also believe is that technology is something that's crucial. Mm -hmm. But if you're not passionate about it, you shouldn't do it because Absolutely. you won't be perseverant enough. No. You know, like for example, in the field of technology, it's really all about trial and error. Hey, does this mm -hmm. architecture work? No, let's try again. Uh, especially when it gets to machine learning. Oh, because the thing is, regular people like myself do mm -hmm. not have access to servers and computing power and data tra training data sets and all this kind of stuff. And so I don't have, um, since these kinds of resources, it's more like an art than a science working with yeah. deep learning, right? It's like I develop a model and hey, does it work? No? Okay, here are 40 different things I could try. Mm -hmm. And I try all of them and each one in combination with every other one. And it's really just kind of that experience that teaches you what kinds of solutions work for what kinds Might of problems. Work. Okay. And what's your uh, collaboration with IBM and Watson? Sure. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more? Bit more no about problem. It. So Watson was the first piece of machine learning I stumbled upon. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I was around 10 years old, once I you know, started working with Swift, creating mm -hmm. more YouTube tutorials, started writing my first book, of course I was, you know, delved deep into technology. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I started to lose a little bit of my passion for it because I felt technology was very literal. Mm -hmm. It's static. It's not dynamic. It doesn't no. adapt, right? Like if I throw new data at it that it's never seen, it's never. It's not going to tell me what it thinks about mm -hmm. it. If I, you know, feed new users at it that have different experiences, it's never going to adapt to those users specifically because uh -huh. it cannot. It's just because of the way that math, you know, works. It's not going to do that. Um, and so when I stumbled upon Watson, and mm -hmm. when I stumbled upon a documentary of Watson playing Jeopardy, that mm -hmm. immediately I remember fascinated that one. me. Yeah. yeah, because the thing is, when you see Watson playing Jeopardy, mm -hmm. that's not just playing chess. No. That's not playing Go. That's not playing a complex video game like the you know Elon Musk startup uh, OpenAI, mm -hmm. I believe, made them play made an AI play a really complex you know three D video game. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the Jeopardy level, that's when you start to see, you know, we've got puns. That's another league. Yeah, exactly. We've got puns, riddles, wordplay, ones that even humans have a hard time understanding. And now computers can understand the syntactics and the semantics of language with deep mm -hmm. learning technology, which is absolutely fascinating. I wanted to find out more about that, and so I stumbled upon the Watson APIs. Mm -hmm. And when I took a look at their Treat and Rank service, more specifically its sister service document conversion, which now are deprecated, mm -hmm. replaced by Discovery. Um, but when I stumbled upon those, at the time, they were an experimental. And so what, what happened was uh, I started working with Discover, uh, with the document conversion. And the point of the, the um, service mm -hmm. is to take a document and to split it up into a bunch of different parts. Okay. But what it did for me was it would take the document and spit out the whole thing in one part, which, uh -huh. of course, is not intended. And so I reported that bug to Stack Overflow mm -hmm. and then to Twitter. And yeah. that led a bunch of IBMers on Twitter to stumble upon my Twitter handle mm -hmm. and then my YouTube channel and then the Stack Overflow post and my Stack okay. Overflow profile. And this one day out of nowhere, um, like in the afternoon someday, uh, there were tons of IBMers just contacting me on Twitter. And I don't know why. Apparently, a few IBMers had shared my um, YouTube videos on the internal Slack. Oh, okay. And so uh, I had uh, you know, gotten in contact with IBM. More specifically, there were two most notable uh, of them, Timothy Duncan and James Argieri, became mm -hmm. my mentors. Uh, and then IBM also invited me to IBM Interconnect 2016, uh -huh. which was my very first major conference or mm -hmm. keynote that I had. Um, and ever since then, I've been uh -huh. collaborating with Watson, but also using tons of other services like Apple's Turi Create, Apple's Create ML. If you take a look at Google's TensorFlow and mm -hmm. Keras, Microsoft's CNDK, all these different libraries to develop and work with machine learning technology, especially in the field of mm -hmm. healthcare, but lots of other fields as well. That's definitely cool. Your, your history with IBM is it's <laughs> amazing. So uh, let me see if I get I get it. So you, you start with a uh, Visual Basic, then you move to iOS, Swift, yes. then deep learning. What's next? What do you think that <laughs> yes. is going to Catch your fancy or Absolutely. interest. Absolutely. Now, there are tons of different technologies that have already caught my interest. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a look at, of course, machine learning is currently the top uh, mm -hmm. technology that I'm most passionate about because, of course, other technologies are great. They really uh -huh. fascinate me. A blockchain is amazing because of yeah. the way it allows us to do, mm -hmm. you know, distributed transactions, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. IoT is even, you know, IoT is great as well 
because it allows you to take different devices, connect them, and even use machine learning to make them intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, quantum com computing is great, but it's not evolved yet. There's no yeah. standard. Uh, people are still working not out the edges. Yet. It's yeah. not ready yet, but there are lots of people starting to work towards it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can definitely see that for the next, like, I can definitely tell, like, say, next decade or two, uh, there's certainly going to be my main interest mm -hmm. in the field of machine learning and AI, uh -huh. uh, because, I mean, that's really what's, uh, if you take a look, for the past six years, uh, actually just just six years ago did mm -hmm. deep learning really start becoming main uh, sort of uh, mainstream yeah. because of the ImageNet challenge. If you take a look at the ImageNet challenge and how uh, oh, you're yeah. able to take 20 million images. And when um, Jeffrey Hinton and his team developed AlexNet, mm -hmm. um, it literally blew every other machine learning algorithm out of the water. It doubled the score instantly mm -hmm. in one year. Um, because it was using deep learning technology. In fact, uh, six years ago, our mm -hmm. computing power was so exponentially less than today that that tiny machine learning mm -hmm. model had to be put on two different GPUs to train. Uh -huh. Nowadays, we can train models like five, a thousand times bigger on one individual mm -hmm. GPU. So, you know, and we can, you know, with IBM's distributed deep learning, you can get up to uh -huh. 256 GPUs on one specific deep learning task, which is amazing. And that with 95% scaling efficiency, which I love, um, with Power AI. Uh, and if you take a look at TensorFlow and, and Facebook mm -hmm. has a very good, um, uh, or Uber, sorry, Uber mm -hmm. has a very good distributed training library as well. So they have some the great technologies now. So AI is definitely going to be my main one. Uh, but quantum computing is also something that I'm really, really interested in, mm -hmm. trying to take a look at how you can combine machine learning with quantum computing yeah. in order to find weights and move along weight spaces mm -hmm. almost instantaneously, basically, yeah. uh, which is going to be really, really interesting in the next few years. Okay, so after these years, you will soon have to make a decision that will change your life, <laughs> like it or not, uh, like yes. all of us had to do. It's choosing what you're going to do when you go to yes. college. <laughs> Is it safe to assume that you will go for computer oh, yeah. science or something completely <laughs> different? <laughs> Are you fed up of all this stuff already? No, I'm not fed up in, uh, no. at all. In fact, every day just gets more and more interesting. Uh, you know, especially with all the new stuff that's coming out with AI. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you take a look just, you know, a few weeks, not a few weeks ago, I think a few months ago, uh -huh. there were the new capsule networks by mm -hmm. Jeffrey and his, and his team. Uh, is it really just seeing all these different advances in AI technology every single day gets me even more hooked into mm -hmm. that technology. Um, and especially the different kinds of work that I do with it, you know, in the field of healthcare is something that really intrigues me because of the way that I can see it impacting people's lives, again, almost mm -hmm. instantly. How you can develop a machine learning based application and give someone an artificial communication ability or allow us to detect depression even before it evolves into anything serious. All this mm -hmm. is so fascinating to me. So in terms of, uh, you know, college or university, not too sure yet. I mean, there's one field of AI that I think is currently not appreciated enough, uh -huh. um, and that's natural language processing. There's a lot of focus mm. on visual data, mm. uh, yeah. a little bit of focus on auditory data. I think mean, mm. that's one of the fields that also needs more attention. Mm -hmm. But definitely natural language is something that needs a lot more attention yeah. because it's something uh, where the, that's really the peak, I guess you mm -hmm. could say, of, of the complexity. Yeah. Because with visual data, you know, dogs look alike. Mm -hmm. Of course, not, no two images are the same. No. But still... There's a pattern that you can decipher there. With natural language, it's much, much more complex. If I were to say, I shot an elephant in my pajamas, right? Mm -hmm. Now, are you wearing the pajamas or is the elephant wearing the pajamas? Exactly. Now, are you taking a picture of the elephant or, or did you hug the elephant? Yeah. Now, if you're a human and if I told you that Alex is a photographer and Alex is the one uh, that, that said this, mm -hmm. then you know, oh, they took a picture and pajamas or clothes in general are yeah. associated with humans and not animals, so it's probably Alex mm -hmm. that's wearing it. And you'd be able to guess that. But computers can do that very easily. They don't have the context. Exactly. So know. I do know that Stanford does a lot of different work mm -hmm. with natural language processing, uh, open source. So definitely they're you know, a candidate uh, and definitely continuing to work with machine learning and AI mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Oh, well, that was fascinating. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much again for joining us. Thank you very and, uh, much. I hope to see you in Madrid again pretty soon. Thank you very much. I love it here. Can't wait to be back. <laughs> very good. <laughs>